A new book highlights the potentially harmful effects of thousands of chemicals in our food environment and household and personal care products. Evidence suggests these chemicals like pesticides and phthalates may be linked to serious diseases like obesity, diabetes, brain disorders, and fertility problems. It's detailed in Dr. Leonardo Trasande's new book, Sicker, Fatter, Poor, The Urgent Threat of Hormone-Disrupting Chemicals to Our Health and Future and What We Can Do About It. In a statement to CBS this morning, the American Chemistry Council said, quote, to stay below ranges of exposure determined to be safe, consumers should read product labels closely and follow directions carefully. The trade group for personal care products says because phthalates are widely, widely used in many consumer products, not just cosmetics and personal care products, their safety has been extensively researched and reviewed. We did not hear back from the FDA because of the partial government shutdown. Dr. Crisande is an associate professor of pediatrics, environmental medicine, and population health at NYU Langone Health. Good morning. Welcome to the table. Good morning. You start the book off with an ominous uh, comparison of a New York City playground in 1962 and that of one today, where the children are fatter and not as healthy. And you, you attribute a lot of that to these hormone-disrupting chemicals. What are they? So hormones are molecules that our body uses to signal and communicate. And hormone disruptors are chemicals that scramble those signals and contribute to disease. We know now of over a thousand chemicals that are hormone disruptors. The evidence is particularly strong for four categories of chemicals. Pesticides, which are used in agriculture. Mm -hmm. Phthalates, which are used in personal care products and food packaging. Bisphenols, which are used in aluminum can linings and thermal paper receipts and brominated flame retardants which are used in furniture electronics and even mattresses so they're basically in almost all parts of our lives yes and you you put you see a very strong link here to obesity and 40 percent of americans are obese according to the surveys that's where the science has gone with leaps and bounds nothing i'm describing here suggests that chemicals are the only factor driving the obesity epidemic diet and physical inactivity are clearly the leading factors to that epidemic so how do they how do these chemicals contribute then so they scramble hormone signals and allow us to and shift our our diet and how it's transformed in our body into fat as opposed into muscle or other categories and so the reality here is that there are safe and simple steps we can take to limit those exposures, which may be easier to accomplish as opposed to changing diet and physical activity, which can be more fundamentally difficult. And our children are particularly vulnerable. Yes, pound for pound, they're breathing more air, eating more food and drinking more water, so they have greater exposure and their developing organ systems are uniquely vulnerable. So what steps can we take to limit our exposure to these uh, hormone disruptors. The great news is that there's many safe and simple steps families can take. Um, avoiding um, a contact with um, aluminum can linings by avoiding canned food altogether, reducing bisphenol exposures one way. Mm -hmm. um, simply looking at the plastic bottle if you're using that and checking the number. The numbers three, six, and seven are yeah. not safe for use. Across Where do you the find board. that number? It's on the bottom of the plastic. So any plastic container, right. there's like a triangle. Yeah, like yep. a number in the bottom of it. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no problem. Three are for phthalates, six are for, bis, uh, for styrene, a known carcinogen, and seven are for bisphenols, which are synthetic estrogens that can also disrupt metabolism. Well, we, you start the book by talking about children. Nora mentioned children as well. The FDA uh, banned BPA in baby bottles and sippy cups back in 2012. Last year, it said that BPA is safe for consumers. What is your reaction to that? Is BPA safe for consumers? There are always shades of gray as the science tries to catch up, but even the FDA's own science suggests effects at lower levels of exposure that are common in humans. We're in a place much like we were with lead and tobacco smoke 20 or 30 years ago. We have to ask ourselves fundamentally what, how we're going to gamble with our health, whether we want to take that gamble. And in, in that context, that's why I'm here talking about this book, because we need to empower consumers to make up their own minds and take the safe and simple steps they need. Let me ask you about regulation, because when it comes to Europe, their governments regulate chemical use much more than, than our government does. Are you seeing a difference in how consumers are reacting to those chemicals or the, or the, the regulation? The reality is that policy predicts exposure, exposure predicts disease, and disease ultimately costs our economy. We found that these exposures cost the United States $340 billion a year. That's 2.3% of our gross domestic product. 
So interesting. Thank you. My pleasure. Mm -hmm.